I want to welcome to the program. He is the libertarian uh, candidate for the uh, uh, for the governorship of, of New York State, Larry Sharp. Larry, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is my second shot at this, by the way, Sam. Not my first, my second. This is the second time you have uh, run. Ran in 2018, got 2% of the vote, uh, about 100,000 votes, and was able to have party status for the Libertarian Party for the first time ever in 2018. And we actually had, in 2019, uh, 107 victories across the state once we were able to be on the ballot across New York State. We had 107 Libertarians locally, only locally, of course, obviously local victories. And then by 2020, the state removed our ballot access, changed the rules, and threw everybody off the ballot. So I'm at it again. They try to stop me, but I'm either stupid or stubborn on both. I'm not sure, but I'm well, not maybe, done. Maybe we'll find out. Yeah, um, maybe both. Now, so, and we should also say that you are not just the Libertarian Party candidate, but the forward party. This is um, the party that's been set up by, um, uh, gosh, is Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, right? Absolutely. Uh, well, I want to be clear on this. I'm, I don't Todd actually Whitman. have their line, right? I am endorsed by the forward party, but I will, I'm running on the Libertarian Party line. I'm endorsed by the party, the forward party, because I think, look, the reality of it is Andrew Yang and I agree on certain things, which is third party is the answer. If we don't have a third party, we're in trouble. So we got to have a third party. So on that, we agree upon. I think he agrees with you on some of your uh, ideology, too, frankly, that it was I always so. my uh, issue with Andrew Yang. Um, yep. uh, at one point, you know, we had talked about uh, or we had uh, talked about him talking about eliminating uh, a lot of of our uh, social safety net. Um, uh, but let's let's just first start with and I just want to I want to I want to talk about this because I think this is maybe our one point of agreement. Uh, I bet we have a lot, Sam. A lot. Maybe two. Okay, but, so two. Uh, but, that's a lot. That's more than one. I'm doubled. Look that's at that. I've already doubled that's it. Good point. Um, Thank you. But uh, let's just talk about this. What has happened in terms of uh, a ballot, uh, I should say, uh, uh, ballot access yeah. um, for not just the Libertarian Party. This also was the case of the Working Families Party. Yeah. Um, and I think Andrew Cuomo's cuomo for women party or whatever it was that he was trying to set up which was a fake party i mean there has been we should also say this there has been a history in this state of basically fake parties set up yes, to correct. confuse people 100%. libertarian party is uh a real party which i would argue also <laughs> confuses people but 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 also, but, but but also to be fair the green party too right yes in the green party well. hawkins the yep. only two real parties that are not parasite parties, as you as she talk about, are the Libertarian Party and the Green Party. Every other party that's out there is a parasite party. I, I think the Working Families Party is, um, I mean, they are a fusion ballot. They also do run uh, candidates on the ballot, uh, uh, on, on their own ballot in, in local elections as well. So are there, but they almost, oh, almost always, more than 60% of the time for sure. In New York. Uh, they just, yeah, in New York. Sorry, I should be yes. clear. You're, and we should say right, like they, they are separate. Outside of New York State, the Working Families Party is different work. Right. I'm talking about specifically in New York State. In New York State, the Working Families Party almost always adjusts back to Democrat in New York State. Um, yeah, it, it's, that's true. 60 right. percent of the time, like you say. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, OK, so what happened? What changed materially at that time in 2020? Uh, this was uh, a Cuomo's way, I think, in many respects of punishing the Working Families Party in yes. particular. Well, if you remember in 2018, Cynthia Nixon uh, ran as a working party's family candidate for the for the governorship. Yeah. Um, the Democratic Party pushed her out completely. He went and got signatures and got in the ballot anyway so that she could get into the primary. He lost the primary. When she lost the primary, the Working Families Party actually wanted to still keep her because they were anti Cuomo. They still wanted to keep her anyway. And he bullied the Working Families Party into just saying, you know what, just back back me. And he did. Cynthia Nixon backed out. They backed Cuomo, and but he didn't want that to happen ever again. So he wanted to get rid of all the parasite parties. So what happened was it used to be you had to get 15,000 valid signatures across New York State to get on the ballot. While that is a lot, it's not undoable. It is a challenge, but it makes sure that only serious candidates get in. It wasn't undoable, and often people were able to do it. They then took that number and went from 15,000 to 45,000. They tripled it. And my argument was, that's now impossible. How can right. you do that? And only six weeks. And they moved the time from the summer 
to now towards the spring where there's still snowstorms in New York State and no fairs, right? Usually you go to fairs, get people to sign your petitions, but now there's no fairs going on and there's still snowstorms and such and six weeks. And just so that people understand how bad this is, if you're trying to do this, you have to get 50,000 signatures because they actually go through and check every signature to make sure everything's accurate. So at least 50,000 signatures you have to get it's not six weeks because you lose one week prepping and uh, prepping to, to set it up so you can give it to the Board of Educate the Board of Elections in the format that they want, and then prepping to make sure your teams get out, what works, doesn't work. So you actually have five weeks. So if that means 50,000 signatures, 10,000 a week. If you can get people to work five days a week, that's 2,000 signatures a day. A great signature gatherer will get 100 signatures a day. If they're amazing, the average only gets between 25 and 50 per day. So now that means I need like 40 or more people to work five days a week, 10 hours a day I, for five weeks straight. I, Impossible. I think we can. I think everybody can agree that that number is prohibitive for right. any any party that isn't like, you know, uh, a wash in cash. No, no, uh, I would and, argue. No, 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 I go further than that, because here's the data that actually happened now. A multimillionaire, Harry Wilson, couldn't do it. A sitting congressman couldn't do it. So it's not prohibitive. It is impossible. Okay. They okay. are literally impossible. washing cash. Okay. okay. And they couldn't do it. Okay. So, I mean, but obviously the parties can do it because they have a party apparatus already set up. I mean, the, the, have the, to do it. They are automatically on. Oh, Democrats and, and Republicans Correct. are automatically. Ah, okay. That's All right. my point. Nobody okay, can do it. Okay. So the parties that are established what? are on automatically. Okay, and so you're going to court to try and fight this and show that it's in, and and presumably um, we, we'd want to return it to back to basically the way it was, fifteen thousand signatures, great. and okay, um, well I, I I support uh, you know uh, going back to uh, that number if there's anybody out there who has an argument that fifteen thousand for whatever reason is too low and that it really should be seventeen thousand or eighteen thousand, I mean it should be doable. Correct. By a uh, a party that is at least, you know, been able to access ballots, you know, within the past with those resources and that. I mean, well, there's a, I there's I a way to gonna push them, <clears throat> even if you say forty five thousand, because some people will argue, well, there's a it's 18 million, 19 million people in New York State is forty five thousand really that much to be forward. We could do forty five thousand, just not in six weeks. If you want to do forty five thousand, <clears throat> you got to give, give us a more couple time. of months. Yep, fair enough. And then we can do it. So okay. you can either raise the the amount of time or shorten the signatures. It's just it's physically impossible, and that's the issue. Fair enough. Um, and I and um, all right. So let's let's move on to uh, again. With that said, we're in agreement there, and uh, we're, hopefully we're working good. Look at ho that. Hopefully the state uh, is that the state supreme court is that uh, where that's where, where we are. Yeah, we we actually went there last Monday, not this week, the week before. And we're actually waiting on a on an actual um, ruling right now. And this long, I mean, we're waiting what seven, eight, nine days now. Uh, it's generally good for us. Usually, the state tells us okay. no, and the state's been well, very forward. Right, let's get into let's get into uh, your, you know the substantive part of uh, not the process part, but the substantive part. You're running for governor. You're um, uh, you're the libertarian candidate. Yep. Presumably, you've gone through like a nomination process with the libertarian yep. party. Is Twice. that right? Yes. Um, OK. Why are you a libertarian? I, I mean, like, you know, because I've I've interviewed uh, and, and, and sort of debated many, many libertarians. I've never had a libertarian on the program who didn't disparage the other libertarians as not being legitimate libertarians. Um, but uh, and I, I assume you you have a, 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 a broader tent, in, at least in terms of like, but no what doubt. is it about libertarianism? Uh, like, you know, if you explain what libertarianism sure. is, I'm, to. I'm happy to tell you why I'm the broad tent libertarian. It is rare in general for libertarians to actively hate me. Some do, but it's rare. Most either like me or think, yeah, he's fine because I am, I think, one of the most open tent libertarians there are, there are because in my view, what libertarian is, is, is you can be as liberal or as conservative as you want to be. Just don't force your views on others. Go out of your way to allow others to do what they want to do. Leave them alone. The more you do that, the better. So, okay, so if we move policies towards that, I'm pretty happy. If that, if we start going towards that area, I'm pretty happy. Pro-abortion rights. People should do as to be forward. I am personally anti-abortion. 
So what I have promised to do in New York State is that there will be less abortions in New York State. But why? Not by using government of force, by creating better environments so that women make better choices. In my view, what I feel are better choices. So I'm going to try to get women to make better choices. How do I do that? By making sure that New York State, it is very easy relative to other states for surrogacy. For many years, surrogacy was illegal in New York State. Now, recently, they've changed that law and they should make it easy to be a surrogate if you want to. Easier adoption laws. And you should be able to have, without question, uh, contraception over the counter. You do those types of things, women will make better decisions, in my view, and there will be less abortions. So I don't want people to have abortions and I don't want the government to tell women what to do with their body. Okay. So, um, uh, and, and would you also make it easier to have children? I mean, one of the big reasons why uh, people uh, choose uh, not to uh, carry a pregnancy to term or not have children at certain times is because it's, it's hard to yes. raise uh, kids Agreed. in our society. So would you do things like expand universal pre-K? Would you do universal daycare? Sure, uh, let me touch two of those pieces. I'll touch daycare and schooling, both of them. When it comes to daycare, there's a side piece I wanna use that helps community, and then a bigger piece, which is schooling. I'll touch the side piece, which is a small chunk. It's a small chunk of what I wanna do is I wanna allow what's called child gardens. Child care right now is very expensive in New York State. So it's a problem, I know, I get it. So you wanna allow for child gardens. What a child garden is, it, it allows an individual um, to go to a nonprofit if they want to, and leave their child there if that nonprofit has an agreement with the state, which is fine, just an agreement, meaning that they are not licensed to be a child care facility. But for example, this would assist things like local churches and getting back into the child care arena of VFWs who have elderly people who want to watch children, giving communities opportunities to drop their kids off if they want to. It's voluntary if they choose to. Right now, the parent would get in trouble for doing that. So I want to allow the parent to do that if the parent wants to. Why would the parent get in trouble right now for doing that? Um, generally speaking, if parents begin to drop their kids off in places, the, the community is going to call the cops and say, look, she's being a bad parent. He's being a bad parent. It's happened in the past. And then child services comes by, starts investigating. That kind of thing happens, particularly oh. if the parent, hold on one second, oh. particularly if the parent has gone through family court. If the parent's gone through family court, the family court system often gets involved and now parents become afraid to drop their kids off. I, I, I'm that confused. Like, you state. mean just like just leaving your kid at the church like or correct. Like, yes. Yes. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. If, but, but who's going to take care of them at the church? It would if you chose to do that, it would be people who run the church like church elders, church employees or volunteers for that local church. So would there be so the, the church would set up a daycare and then they correct, could drop correct. off the kid. OK. Correct. Yes. But couldn't churches set up daycares now? Generally speaking, they can't because of the what's been happening in the local churches, particularly black churches, as an example. Many of them have been having financial issues and they can't uh, de they can't handle the regulatory process required to be an official daycare. So I'm saying don't make that illegal. That's all I'm saying. OK, so you're saying you Keep don't want if you don't want to go to daycare. Go ahead but make it legal for someone. Let me, let me understand what you're saying here. Let me understand what you're saying. So in other words, you want to get rid of the licensing requirements for daycare. No, it's not what I said at all. I, 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 I don't, said. I don't understand. You're saying, I, I don't understand. I, I guess I just don't understand what you're saying. No worries. I'm saying if you're a nonprofit and, and someone wants to drop their kid off at your nonprofit, that you're not going to have any problem from the family courts or from CPS. That's what I'm saying. But, but it does what if happen. Not, if you think I'm making that up, you can just do some homework. No, you got people but, here but I'm, so, I'm, I it guess like, I mean, we're talking about million plus children, uh, maybe may, at any given time. I don't know. Maybe it's not There's a million. There's no way we're talking about a million children being dropped off at a church. We're not no, no, no. I understand that. But but I'm yes. asking, I my question was, you want to reduce abortions by making it an easier choice for uh women and and couples no nope. uh and people who can get pregnant to have kids and i asked what about universal pre-k or daycare and i said i was and gonna go there i said i had one small thing which was this plus a large thing this isn't okay. a one so i can't do one magic thing and fix it there's well, at least you four, could. five six things you could you could no well no, we did can't. We did no. universal pre-K in the city, and yes. we did that with taxation. Yep. Correct. We could 
do universal daycare. Okay, we did it in the city and the, and it didn't magically make things great. It was one thing. I, it, it made- Things aren't magically it, great in New York City right now because no, they did their thing. Things aren't magically great in New York City. Correct. But, but if you want to call it magic or not, it's not really magic. It's all of a sudden, um, it became much easier to get your kid to go to pre-K. I mean- yes, so, so let me go to my next step, which is- uh, uh, changing our system from the current K through 12, which across New York State, which is K through 12, and moving it to a pre-K through 10. I think we should pay for pre-K all the way through 10th grade. Absolutely, I think we should. It should be a pre-K through 10 versus a current K through 12. We shouldn't have to, as we did in New York City, to your point, we had to make special laws to create pre-K. I think it should be statewide. Why not? So let's create a pre-K through 10 statewide plan i think it works perfectly but how we do that but wait a second we don't we plan. lop off uh two years of high school education by doing as it. a requirement as a requirement i'll keep going if you let me go i'll keep going i will the the pre-k through 10 should be a, a requirement that makes any sense that's a requirement the last two years of high school should be done in a separate way let me cover the pre-k through 10 then i'll cover the two years of of, of high school at the end right now we go k through 12. I'd rather us go pre-K through 10, and I'd rather us pay from a separate fund rather paying through local taxes. I think a separate fund is a better way of funding our school system. And you, and you do it literally per student that is in that district. They get a flat fee. Right now, the state pays about $29,000, give or take, per kid in New York State per year. And we usually rank in the bottom 25 of the states, generally speaking, sometimes around 26, 27, sometimes low as 33, 34, depending upon what you're looking at. But we tend to rank low on education, spending the most in the entire nation. So I'd rather lower that number and have, go from a specific fund, a fund which is a New York State trust, similar to what they do in Norway, what they do in Singapore, that kind of thing, funded heavily by private capital. Private capital right now is spending a lot of time trying to find places to put their money. Sadly for us, they're doing a lot of it in real estate. And as they start buying all the real estate, they're raising real estate property and making families unable to purchase housing. They're turning us into renters when some people don't want to be renters. I'd rather pull them out of the real estate market and put them instead into that trust. It'll be a trust that they will put into, and it's not debt. They get a dividend every year based upon how much money we create, backed by the tax base of, the, of New York State, which is about $80, million, $80 billion or so in that area. So that fund now funds schools. If that funds schools, then there is no need for school tax. If we can end school tax, that will lower property tax by about 50% across the state as a general rule, depending on where you live. And it will also stabilize rents, allowing people to move out, allowing kids to have homes earlier, not requiring so many, uh, not requiring so many people having uh, roommates, all those things make it easier for a, a young family. To okay, move into a so home Larry, let me just to. let me just see if I can understand this because you're you're Go you're ahead. you're you're. Uh, I, I mean, and and it's and a for detailed me, plan. It's a no, real plan. I I agree. It sounds very uh, detailed. Um, it is. The top line, of course, is losing two years of of high school education. But we'll put that aside, I guess, for I'm a moment. I'm gonna go there. I know, I know. Um, and uh, but this trust that you're talking about, it's basically yeah. a security, right? I mean, it, you, we're creating some type of 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 investment fund. Is that what it is? Similar, and, yes. And, and it does it guarantee certain dividends to the people who invest in it? Yes, um, it, it will be a small, very safe, low return, but safe return uh, dividend for private capital and permanent capital. That so wants it's to basically, put money into it. it's a bond. It's a bond, right? I mean, Similar, that, but not, but it's not debt. It's okay. dividend based. It's, you buy and, in and you get a chunk based upon it. It's almost like buying equity, almost like that. And what happens if we have a, a stock market crash? What no, if the could stock- happen. Okay, so what happens to the funding? This is our pension plan now. We have a pension plan in New York State right now happens in New York state. And then the taxpayer puts a bunch of money in and we pay for it. And we wound up having what was now 17% of our budget is now to, to prep the pension or, or some well, number yeah, like yeah, that. Last yeah, I yeah, yeah. No, I definitely think that, uh, you know, uh, now. I, 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 exactly. Yep. Um, but how does, so, so how would you replenish that fund and meet the obligation to the investors in the event that, um, in the event that we can't, 
we, we, we can't provide them the dividend, which I would imagine we have a legal uh, responsibility to uh, under your plan. Um, but and how would I you like your question, Sam? I do. And they're important questions. And I'm answering them. I'm give every time you ask me a question, I give you an answer. And before we go any further, make sure we're clear on this. If you would ask the other gubernatorial candidates these well, questions, let, let's just, let's they would just have nothing. OK, well, because I, why it's I, so important that I am in this debate so that they will have to have an actual answer. They don't. Well, I they're do. not they're not suggesting uh, privatizing the funding mechanism for uh, for public schools. Correct. They have no answer. Well, no, uh, they they what's, we, what, what what's Kathy Hochul's answer? We have a system for funding schools now. I personally no, no, would like to, to federalize schools to take care of, to make the schools better. What's well, her answer? I, changing the funding mechanism is not clear to me that it's going to make schools better. Yes. And then let me explain why. I'll, I'll tell you why. First off, once we start funding schools that way, I've just said it's going to begin immediately to stabilize rents and lower property taxes. When that begins to happen, now more people will stay in New York State. Number one, more will stay. How many more? I don't know. But we've been losing population compared to the other states like there's no tomorrow. That's why we've already lost a congressperson. Compared to other states, we, we are actually losing the most. And we are we, growing the slowest of all the other states I, out there. I, I agree. I agree. And I do yes. think housing is too expensive. What is the Correct. relationship? Yes. What is the relationship between less property taxes and lower rents? Because once property tax is lower, people when they're I didn't say rents were lower. I'm sorry. Did I say that? I meant stabilize. Rents will stabilize and property taxes will be lower. Right. OK, so yes. so Rents landlords will, will get more. Profit. I didn't mean that if I said that. I no, think okay, I said stabilize. Okay. No, yeah. So uh, yes. landlords will gain more profit. And right. rents, according to you, will not go up because property taxes won't be so high. So they'll be able to get more profit without raising rents. That's won't they also be able they to get, get more, more profit. profit without having to rent raise the rent? Having been a renter in, in New York City for, yep. you know, uh, I don't know, over the course of 20 some odd years or whatever it was. I've been um, both a renter and an owner. Both same. Yep. Um, my sense is, is that it's not a function of changes in property taxes that drives rents. It is what the landlord thinks they can get. Yes. Agreed. Because we've had an explosion of, of rent increase in this uh, state and it yep. has been completely untethered from a change in property tax. So and most why of that, you're right. And most of that has been because permanent capital is purchasing so many of the property relatively to what it used to be in the past, because there's no other place for them to invest. So when permanent capital starts buying up property for rentals, they just keep raising the money because that's all they do. But when individual people rent, Right. When individual people rent their homes out, as they do often, they don't push as much. That's that's just the truth. Right. People have been renting themselves their homes out for decades, for, I don't know, centuries, probably, so, I guess. So, Larry, you're but saying you that you see the big explosion when you add permanent capital into the into the mix. I'm saying let's pull permanent capital out of the mix. Well, it's not going to necessarily time, you're, you're trying to entice them with a different investment correct. vehicle that has yes. fixed returns that are low. And you're suspecting you think that people are going to get out of the real estate business uh, because of that. I'm and saying some of private capital will. Yes, because it, that is it, riskier. It, it, than something backed by a government. I yes, mean, usually when people would go into that, I mean, they, they could go buy bonds if they didn't want, they could buy, buy municipal bonds right now they if could. they didn't want uh, things and as- And they as, still are. Yes. Right, right, but Larry, my, my point is this, is that you're saying, if we do this, mm -hmm. then necessarily that will happen. And, in, and, and you've done it twice now. One is, if we have a safe investment vehicle that provides low, but, um, you know, guaranteed returns, yes. which is really like a U.S. Treasury bond or mm -hmm. a uh, municipal bond or a state sure. bond. Similar. But because that exists, all of a sudden people are going to invest less in real estate. I don't. Yes. There's no evidence that that's the case. You're also minute, asserting. Hold on. Hold on, let you me finish. You You're also that? asserting that if we mm -hmm. reduce property taxes, Landlords are not going to chase profits whenever they can. 
Which I, I also I don't know what you're talking about. Never you said, said that. it's going to stabilize rents. Correct. Yes. And there's no evidence. There's no excuse they're me. Getting, excuse okay, me. They're getting there's profit. no evidence. There's no evidence hmm? that a landlord is inhibited for seeking more profits, even if they get more profits. Sure. Agreed. Like, like if if a landlord thought like, I could I could raise the rent here by fifty dollars. Yes. And I get that profit. Uh, I have no need to raise it to a hundred because I'm already getting fifty dollars. That is not my experience of how American capitalism no, works. No, I agree with you. And 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 landlords will always do. But something else will also happen. There'll be a landlord who now can lower their rent by fifty dollars and still make money because they haven't gotten anybody into their basement apartment or into their secondary apartment. So some landlords, in an attempt to get any money will lower their rents. And if some lower their rents, even if only 10% lower their rents, if only 5% lower their rents, by default, some people will go there. That will affect the rest of the market. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, so except for except for will, no one's feeling the pressure to lower rents. And the reason why rents are so sky high is because there's not enough housing. I mean, you're the the obvious answer to what you're talking about. Yep. In ter if, if the issue, and we were talking about schools, yep. but if the issue is how do we lower rents mm -hmm. in New York, it seems to yep. me we build more, we zone. Agree. Yes. And, and by we, I mean our government uh, oversees this. And we, we have some form of rent regulation. Rent regulation. Wow. Okay. No, you had me until the rent regulation piece. You had me until then. I was good until that. Then you had me. No, rent regulation has made lots of problems which I don't want to get involved in. Build more housing. I'm in. Change zone. Look, we you're okay for government. You're, you're okay are, for more government housing. We are basically me and you. We're agreeing on all kinds of things. You're, you're, you're good with government housing. I, I have no problem with, with us building more housing. Government housing has to have a specific piece to it, though. A specific piece. Government housing has to become rent to own. If you want to own, you should be able to rent to own. If we change that, now we're rocking and rolling. I don't want the standard government housing. If you've seen it in New York State, it's terrible. I don't want that. It's what incredibly underfunded, housing. too. But, Say again? Um, it's incredibly underfunded. I mean, we it's, need the federal government the to do more. That's the answer that they always say. We have a $220 billion budget. More than only 20 countries have a larger budget than us. Underfunding is a garbage. That's not true. Because how much can we possibly have? Uh, uh, 30, 300 billion? 400 billion? No, the system is broken. And what I'm saying is, I'm happy with government housing if we do rent to own. Rent to own changes everything. And not the rent to own we have with some of the private capital people who are just stealing people's money. I mean, an actual rent to own system to where now someone who is stuck in their world in government housing can actually own their own home if they choose to. Not requirement, but option. You begin to do that, well, now we're not as concerned about gentrification. Now we have more of an ownership mindset. Now we have people who want to invest in their properties. Rent to own, I'm in. But the way we're doing it now, we'll just give it more money. We've been saying just give it more money for 50 years or 70 years. And no, it's not working. We, we've they been giving less. But 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 put that aside. That. Put that aside. We've been getting we've been getting less money yes. uh, to, to government housing as opposed to. And that's why I think people are saying uh, uh, more. But you're suggesting this rent to own thing is a state or a federal uh, program. The state's fine. Uh, look, I'm running for governor. Uh, okay. I'm running for governor. I'm happy to make it statewide. I mean, I'm, I can't really affect the federal as much, but whatever I could affect, for example, NYCHA, I could affect that. So I would want to begin to make that to the best of my ability, shift that towards rent to own. Okay, and so then let's if we talk go about even further. The goal would be in my long term goal, my long term goal to get people to build more housing would be if we can create a system where now those same private capital people who are throwing money into into buying places and renting them, that I could get them even to build the equivalent of government housing. So they could build cheaper housing, the equivalent of government housing with another similar rent to own pr a process within that. So I can get more and more people moving into a rent to own concept. More people who, the sad part is I don't know where you grew up, but I grew up in a very poor neighborhood, poor area. Most people didn't even imagine they would ever own a house. And I think we're there now for many Americans. They believe I'm never going to own a house. So I want to change the environment. And I want people to believe, no, 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 I can own a house. If I want to, I can do that. The more we push rent to own, the better we're going to be. 
And the problem is the people right now who are doing mobile building are large hedge funds, huge real estate companies with billions of dollars who are doing this. So how do I entice them to do what I think is the right thing, which is building houses and homes and apartments for people who aren't gonna be able to afford one? Well, I give them incentive. I have them do it. I let them sponsor if they want to, name the housing after your hedge fund if you want to, whatever's gonna make you feel good. And on top of it, in New York State right now, when they sell that home, that home that, that, that they have a capital gains tax. I would say if you instead do rent to own the way I'm telling you to do so, there'd be no capital gains tax on whatever you sell. And that would make some of the people who are already dropping literally but, billions but, of dollars in building homes to shift into building homes for rent to own, getting people who but, are- How are, are those in, people who are eligible got, for government housing going to afford that? If it is uh, a hedge fund anticipates making those kind of profits and they just want to save on their capital gains. Yes, because right now, if you're dropping $10 billion in homes, capital gains tax is going to be a lot of money for you. If I'm eliminating the capital gains tax, they'll make money on the back end versus but losing that. You, you, you still have the same system of like assuming that they're going to go like, you know what, guys? Hey. Let's be cool. Uh, yep. We're getting our capital gains here. I'm not assuming any of that. Here's what I would ask. Hold on. You're, you're saying that my assumptions are so wrong and so bad. Okay. What's, what is, what's going to – that's a plan. What I'm talking about could actually happen. Like they would actually think about it. How do I know that? I work in the financial world, and people say, yeah, Listen, that's – Larry, that's not bad. I would consider that. Okay. So, so instead, Larry, your I answer – I would consider that. But, but The Republican but, answer right now, the Republican answer is simply this. There's no problem. How the much Democrat did property is, taxes? I mean, excuse me, let, let me just it. ask you this. Okay. I mean, hypothetically, I'm sure you've talked to friends of yours who said, yeah, I'd be I'd look into it. Um, how much did prices drop across the board after the Trump tax cuts? I don't know. The answer is zero. That's how much you. they dropped. And based upon your theory, if we cut taxes, prices drop. No, and I just I said. That, that's that's not what I said. What I just I asked said, you. Wait a second. Okay. So I are we asked talking you, about, hold on. Are we talking about the capital gains tax? Yeah. Are we about the, okay. No, no, no. That's not what I said. What I said was if they get a benefit for doing the thing, which is creating more rent to own housing, then we'll have more rent to own housing. Yes. That's and what I said. Yes. I didn't say Larry, prices magically come down. I, I said we'll have more rent to own housing. I understand. And I said, how are the people who we're talking about who can't afford the rents now going to afford that. And you said, well, they'll make it more affordable because they're getting the capital gains tax cut. And so you have set up I this. Said, I don't think I said that. Well, I, how do we, do we make it? A, I asked you the question yeah, five they're, minutes ago, they're, they're, how they're are people going to afford this? And you gave housing. me that answer. Huh? They're already paying for government housing now. I'm not changing their rents. I'm just saying it needs to start going from rent to own. I'm not raising their rents. They're paying their rent now. It, 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 okay, so you're going to so build these difference? houses and they're going to be at the same rent that they exist now. That's what I'm trying to encourage. Yes, that's the rule. If you do that, that's when you get the tax cut. So if these you do private the thing entities that I'm telling you to do, these private you then get the tax cut. You're going to put rent control on these private entities. They're not going to be able to charge higher rents. If they want my tax cut. Yes, if they want my tax cut. Or they can do what they're doing now. I'm okay. not forcing them to do the thing, but they can do the thing if they want to, to get the tax cut, which I believe will help out people really. I believe, okay. and so I said- So you're basically just saying, yes. we're going to, instead of, uh, instead of the government uh, essentially contracting to build these things, Correct. we're going to privatize these things, and we're gonna still pay with government money by giving them uh, uh, tax breaks on it. So is the government still going to pay for it? It's just going to be in the hands of private uh, enterprise who are going to manage these things because private enterprise loves to manage, uh, you know, uh, uh, essentially rent controlled uh, uh, buildings. Is that what you're well, suggesting? I mean, if that's what the have, case. What we have now is we have NYCHA failing miserably. So we have now we have we have public housing failing miserably. So we have now. So what I'm saying is I have an optional plan. If my plan's a complete failure, if you're right and my plan's a failure, then no one will take it and we have no change. Okay, then you're right and I was wrong. It's possible. 
But if, but if I'm right, then this works very well. If no one listens to my plan, we keep walking okay. down this horrible road we've been walking down for the past 40 years. Well, there are so other I know plans you're trying about making to match my plan no, against perfection. I'm not. I'm I'm matching my plan against status quo. Okay, which I is what we have right now. I understand. I think there's I think there's definitely uh, I think there's definitely uh, other plans on how to improve um, housing. But let's get back to school. You want to stop? You didn't, you didn't uh, like my housing thing. Well, I think privatizing and and expecting private uh, entities to um, uh, private entities mm -hmm. to um, uh, accept what you're talking about and mm -hmm. not. Um, I just don't trust private entities at this point. Do to, you trust government more? Yeah. Okay. I do. That one um, we can't agree upon. Right. I mean, well, that's fundamental, right? Yep. I mean, you don't that trust government, but but um, uh, you know, I just think the uh, the redistribution so of money too. to private so uh, entities good. not helpful. Uh, but ten, uh, so we stop but, schools but, at tenth so grade. You think Let's monopoly get, is good. I I, I think do do I think that government monopoly is good? Um, I know I, you do. I, I do to a certain extent, but I don't I think that it's a, a monopoly uh, that the government is. I'm not proposing government have a monopoly on housing. I think there can be private housing. I think that can exist. You've just told me that you don't think private companies do a good job at managing housing. Well, I don't think private I don't think private entities would be, would do a good job at mal, at, at, at housing uh, non market rate uh, housing. Yes. All I would say is look at the nonprofits that run housing and then look at the government housing. And I think you'll find nonprofit, which is private, far better than government housing. Uh, you do, might do they do it at the same scale? No, not at all. Right. So then how about we have a whole bunch of small ones and it would be better. Look, well, at, I, look I, at like Jericho Project in the Bronx, an example. Their housing is way better. I mean, I know this is the same better. argument with charter schools too, Larry, but the fact of the matter is that charter schools as a whole, as a whole, do not uh, uh, outperform public schools as a whole. You certainly can find one or two that uh, in instances do, but they also uh, self-select. And this I get even from like a guy from the Manhattan Institute. Uh, they self-select in terms of parents and students. I'm, and, I'm, I'm and, going and back so, to what you said about private entities running housing. And what I'm saying is, well, you know, you, you, you generalize it to like, uh, yes. And these charters uh, entities, they're better. Well, they're not. I mean, the, the, the data shows that they're not. You're saying the private organizations like nonprofits that run housing are not better than NYCHA. No, I'm saying these things aren't scalable. That you're so going to rely that's on. That's, let's have a whole bunch of smaller companies doing it. That's my whole point. Yes, but you can't. You, the, the, and I drew an analogy. You, Larry, on. Larry, Say, I know you hold on. You hold on. Public housing. You hold on. This, I'm not I drew an analogy. Housing. To charter schools, there okay. are some charter schools that are okay, but their ideas are not scalable, mm -hmm. and they're not scalable because they have to serve a broader population. And we know from the data that charter schools, as a whole, do not do a better job than public charter schools. Charter schools are not even in my plan. No, I understand. I was making an analogy, Larry. You know what that is. Now, do, let's charter schools are still talk about schools. tenth to twelfth grade. You Hold don't on. think that's Go necessary for kids? Government charter schools. No, no, are no. Still government schools. Let's talk about. We started about education. Right, uh, let's do it. I love it. I gotta find us to go. We gotta agree again, Sam. Before we end, we gotta agree on something again. I, I, I think it's before getting increasingly unlikely. Oh come on. Tenth uh, to twelfth grade. Yes. Not, uh, not necessary for everybody to attend. Let's Correct. get these and, and let's let get these 16 right now, year olds then. into the workforce. Not necessarily. Let me let me let me explain how it works. In my plan at 10th at 10th grade, when you're 16, you take a test, a government, a government test. You should be happy about that. A government monopoly test that if you get that, if you pass that test, you get a high school diploma done. You have a high school diploma now. Now, our Constitution in New York State says we must pay for grades a one through 12. That's what it says in the Constitution. So I have to pay for 11th and 12th grade that I have to pay for. No worries, I'll do that. Here's how I do it. I will copy the model that I had when I left the Marine Corps. I left the Marine Corps, I got the GI Bill. And then Marine Corps said, here's X dollars and you have Y years to use it. I forgot what it was, I left the Marine Corps 30 years ago. So whatever that time, whatever that money was, that's what they gave me. Every kid now gets a credit, $20,000 and five years to use it. Now, what do I wanna do?
I want to then give them the options. You're 16. You just graduated high school in New York State. You have four options. Option number one, go to a trade school. If you think, hey, I don't want to go to school. I want to be a plumber. I want to be a carpenter. Go to, go to a two-year trade school. Government's going to pay $20,000 for it. Go either get your license if you can or be ready for an apprenticeship, depending on what trades you go through. Number one, the state desperately needs trades like there's no tomorrow. We are the average tradesman in New York State's over 50 when they should be over 30. Big problem, we're, we're importing labor from other places. We should be trying to have more New York kids doing work. It'd be great. You don't wanna do that, no worries. Go to a prep school. Right now, for most kids in New York State, too many of them, 11th to 12th grade is smoking weed and study hall and playing video games. And then they can't, and then they can't even, they don't even bother wanting to have, go, go to college. They do, they're not ready for college. Now the average kid going to college takes six years to graduate, not four, disaster. We're not prepping most of our kids for school. In certain areas in Rochester, which is some of the worst school districts in the entire country, if you are a black male, the odds of you graduating high school, the last time I checked was under 20%. Those numbers may have changed since COVID, I'm not sure. But last time I checked was under 20%, the chance of you to graduate high school as a black male in certain Rochester school districts. So what, I'm, what am I saying? If you want to go to trade school, great. Or go to a prep school. You think you might want to go law. You might want to go medicine. You don't know. Go to a two-year prep school so that when you go to your college, you are ready. Instead of right now, for most college kids, the first year of college is 13th grade because the kids aren't ready. You will be ready. You went to a prep school. Or let's say you're super smart. You're bored in school. You're the kid okay. who's going to be a doctor. I, I get go the get idea. your two-year degree now. I get the I'm idea. I get the 16 idea. 16-year-old kids okay. an, option, an opportunity so to make choices. So, all right. So on one hand, these 16 yep. year olds are just getting high and they're playing video games and they can't graduate high, uh, high school. And then you're saying the thing to do mm -hmm. is to give these guys and gals, I mean, these yep. guys, yep. the opportunity to make a key life decision yep. with $20,000 in the bank. We're going to turn them into like on one hand, they're so they're such f ups that they can't do anything. Uh, not what I except said. For Please games. don't say that. Okay. I did not say that. That's they're getting said. high. All they're doing is getting high and I'm smoking. This, and wait, wait. I'm sorry. Let me wait, Larry. Let me finish. I'm trying to assess what you said. The individual. You. You cannot pretend that you didn't just say these guys are just getting high and playing video games. Yeah, but which, I didn't use an accent. <laughs> that's true. Didn't use the accent. Come on. I, d don't make me do an impression of you. Um, they, they're getting high they and are. they're playing video games. That's true. And instead, what we should do is say, make a key decision about the yes. future, your entire life right now. No, that no. Two things you're wrong. Number one, you said they're all f ups. It's not the kids. It's the system. The kids aren't are system is making the them system. get high and play video Correct. games because they're bored in school, they don't care, they have no purpose, they have no community. Yes, the system, not the kids. The kids want to do great, but the system says, says go to school and learn stuff that you don't care about, be unhappy, that's what it says. Don't, we're not treating the kids like adults so they don't act like adults. So, you know, I got- two part, I, the second I, part you said, which is a life changing. No, your kids, 16. the Larry, average kid in this world is going to have at least five careers, not five jobs. I, I understand. Five careers. I understand. This I understand. is not life changing. I understand. This is a decision they can make now at 16. I, now, hold on. I, I, this is the most important piece. You said for a kid right now, they're making this, these decisions and screwing up at 26. The price for failure at 26 is way higher than the price for failure at 16. Okay. If they make a mistake so, at 16, I also give them five years. I'm allowing them to make a mistake. I'm allowing them to screw up and to learn their own. But you're also depriving them of those last two years of, of high school. So now let me ask you this. Because that's uh, so like, valuable. I, I mean, I actually do think it is. Uh, I mean, it's I think not. your idea, that's fine. your idea sounds interesting to me and I would like to do that, institute that maybe after high school and roll it into a free college program. But to deprive um, uh, uh, kids of the last two years of high school because the We're dropout rate, them. I mean, They're you cite the dropout rate as if it's a bad thing, okay. but then you say like uh, it, it, that, that, that these students who drop mm -hmm. out at that time also yeah. have the ability to make this assessment as a consumer as to where you know what they're going to do with that money 
that has been diverted from educating uh, them and making sure they get an education for those last two years. Now, if you want to add this on, but this is all, I mean, ultimately, every plan that you have, yep. and the reason why we spend so much time on funding, right? Because yep. I asked you about education and I asked you about a daycare and you want to send people to unlicensed daycare facilities. No, I don't. Stop saying that. This is not a left or right or, or, or an all or none. You can still have day. I'm not removing daycare. I'm giving people an option of dropping their kids area, off on unlicensed, off unlicensed by the family not, calls the CPS. Not, and they're like, no, if they do Larry, that, they're, Larry, they're, they're, they're joking listen, away. Listen, That's what you're churches saying. have daycare centers. They exist. Many of the, yes, but many of them can't anymore because of the regulatory system. I'm saying allow that. Well, to okay, exist. so unlicensed daycare centers allow is unregulated. That to exist. Yes. Okay, so anybody can open up a daycare center if they're a nonprofit. Correct, if they want to. And it will be free. No, they can decide what they want. All I'm saying is you okay. don't go to jail. So you don't I, get your kids taken away. Yeah, That's I, all I'm saying. Okay. So if you say, wait a minute, but I that don't doesn't trust, any I don't way trust address Emma's house. I think Emma's a bad but, person. No, I okay, get it. I get it. I get the. I get the idea. I get the idea. Drop you, your kid off at regular daycare. No day responsibility for 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 dropping the kids off at any place uh, for daycare. I get that. Okay. Um, but I, that was not really Crazy an answer Paris to my kid. question. Know, it's a, it's it was not an answer to my question, which is like, I don't know how these people are, how you're going to get daycare. It's just like, they're going to charge. Those people aren't, yes. aren't just hanging at their house. And yes. I, I was talking about free universal daycare. If you want to help women choose yes. to, to, to not, to, to, not, to, to have, uh, to, uh, to yep. not terminate their pregnancy. I have one more piece. And by the way, wait, 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 this, well, wait a second. Wait a I'll second. Let me, let me just finish my point for a second, Larry. Go ahead, please. My point was all of them. the reason why, well, sort of. The reason why I'll you keep you going like to the reason why you keep going to the funding mechanism because everything ends up being how do we reduce taxes as opposed to expand services. So like we could add hmm. two years, excuse me. We could add two years on both ends of the education, we could. but you don't want to do that. What you want to do is come up with so-called innovative plans that yes. actually um, provide, there's no evidence of any of the eff efficacy of these plans. The only clear result of all these plans that you've proposed are less taxes. No. On landlords, on corporations, and I guess on individuals in terms of their property taxes. Yes. So, two parts. Number one, I will cover the part you also mentioned. There's one more piece to it. Again, this is a systemic problem. I have to have multiple plans to fix this. Okay. None of the who's gonna who's gonna support these plans that you're talking about like i mean like like the, all of these tax because it seems to me that like what you do is you start with how do we cut taxes no, and then I'll you go you how I start. because i've never met an educator and i've yep. interviewed probably i don't know at least dozens but maybe a hundred on this program yep. over the course of, of of 18 years who said you know what we really need to do less less school we got to get the kids out at 16 and uh i've never ever come across an educator who has ever said those last two years of school mm -hmm. unnecessary well there are two things one if that's what you do for a living you're never going to say your job's unnecessary so that's number one clearly well they're not <laughs> teachers they're they're just educators people well, who me, but are study they education hold on what? are they administrators or teachers no, they're people who study education. They've probably been teachers, but they're not worried about their okay. job being lost. Let me tell you what they teachers can... tell me, and I've been doing this for five years, and I'm sure I've talked to at least 100 teachers. And 99 out of 100, and I'm making that number up because it sounds cool. Um, yes, telling I me, imagine. Yes, uh, uh, tell me, Larry, your ideas are good, and here's why. My, what my ideas do is they eliminate e e extra administrators. Right now, we have places in New York State where there are more administrators than there are teachers. If you look at the number one reason why teachers leave the field, it's because of over-administration. We have our teachers get master's degrees, they get all kinds of issues. And they it go is the government classroom. test, like you suggested, actually. Again? is It's the government test It's the uh, that uh, teachers leave because they don't have the freedom to teach in the way that they want to. Yes. But that's, that's you, yes, you've that's instituted correct. the, okay, okay, so. I'm agreeing with you, yes. Again, look, another thing we agree upon. You're right. That's the reason why teachers leave. 
because we have them go through, jump through all these hoops, then they show up in the classroom and they're controlled by administrators, right? They don't want to be controlled by administrator. I don't want them controlled by administrators either. I want them controlled by local schools, by parents, by PTAs. I'd rather have them controlled by that than by some administrator. If I have to have them controlled, that's what I'd rather have them do it. So how my does, plan actually does that. But let me cover the last two years piece. Well, but now what plan, happens in a two-year year piece? Where did, so you're, you're, you eliminate the last two years of school. You're also eliminating the teachers. Like there's no impact no, on the ratio of administrators to teachers, are there? Yes. And let me tell you why. Once you start funding specifically through the fund that I mentioned, there's a huge chunk of administrators who their job is to follow all the federal and state guidelines for money. That's one. That's a huge chunk of them. I don't know how many, but it's a, it's a big chunk. That chunk of people are no longer required. So if school districts want to fire them, they may, up to them. I'm not going to fire any teachers or administrators, but districts may decide, you know what? You're a grant writer for the state. We don't require a grant writer anymore. You can go away. Grant writers are, are not inhibiting what the teachers are doing. Correct. Well, yes, they are, because to, to get the grant, there's strings attached. So you have to do X, Y, and Z so you get the grant money, which is why they just get attacked. You must do these things so we can get our money. That's how they control teachers, through cash. Once that cash goes away, those administrators go away, those strings go away. So now locally, you can create so your own strings. That's how you get rid of administrators. But there, but when you say locally, you're going to have your own strings. You're still the teachers are not going to be the ones who are uh, who are getting that cash. Then there's just going to be somebody else who's going to be doing it. You're assuming that we would all of a sudden add a bunch more administrators. Look, some districts so might. it's just it's the possible. number of administrators. I mean, somebody's yes. going to be making the rules for what uh, is taught. Yes, and you remember, Sam. You're old enough to remember. When you went to high school or, or, or junior high school, we didn't have 45,000 vice principals. You know what I do remember from high school? I went to school, I high school in Massachusetts. And you know what I remember? Proposition, Proposition 3, or oh. was it 13, where taxes were cut. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, a third of our classes went away. And we had no arts. And we had no theater. Yep. And we had uh, yep. uh, half sports teams. Yep. That's what I remember, what happened yes. when the taxes were and, cut. And do you know why so many places in New York State that happens? In New York State, we are funded. Our average teacher makes about $70,000 per year. An average administrator makes almost $200,000 a year. We're not underfunded in New York State, right? We give $28,000, $29,000 per there kid is, in New York State. Listen, We're not listen, underfunded. The problem with education from that every issue. educator that I have talked about, talked to, has been, is uh, essentially we're asking schools to make up for uh, income and low income uh, areas. Yep. There is not a single educator that you can talk to who doesn't do this, who doesn't study this, who wouldn't be able to tell you the outcomes on education mm -hmm. um, when you just provide them what the median income is in any given area code. I mean, yep. that's the um, that's the issue. But you're not wrong. Right. But that's not an issue in New York State. In New York State, it's not an issue. In New York State, teachers aren't at the poverty level. No, they're it's not, not look, teachers. Not it's the students. It's the yes. students. It's yes. the students. Agreed. So imagine if that 18, if that uh, I'm going to say, imagine argument. if we had less taxes and real estate. Uh, uh, and then magically what happens is everything gets cheaper. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's not how it that's works. That's not what I'm saying. Imagine if instead of us having to worry about paying administrators three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year, I'm not making those numbers up. That exists in New York State. Imagine if we were instead of paying them three so or four entire, or five hundred thousand a year, this we entire could drop a bunch of these administrators in any local district okay. and put that money either into a school Larry, or into a teacher or into so a you're classroom. You're telling me the uh, the theory of cutting the last two years of high school yes. is really just a very, very roundabout way to have less school administration. No, that's not the only thing. That's that's a bonus that comes at the end. Well, but what no. is the, what is the- Let me tell you, you keep cutting me off and trying to get We've been talking for an something. hour and I asked we you this question literally an hour ago. We could talk for hours, let me go then. You, you just spent so much time on, on explaining how you were gonna get rid of taxes and not like- That's all you heard. 
Well, no, I heard you're going to cut the last two years of high school, and yes, you to, have not a addressed that. to go to specialized schools. Why can't we do Why that? Why are specialized Why? schools a bad thing? Imagine because if you're, you're a teacher. Giving, because you love. you're saying two things, Larry. You're saying that the kids don't have the responsibility to stay in yes. school. Correct. And then... But we're going to give them the responsibility to uh, survey these options here yes. and decide which one that they think they should do, as opposed yes. to taking the $20,000, I guess, and maybe going to blow it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a credit for school. So they it's a credit for school. And so yeah, the other kids who don't want to go to school are just right. not going to go. Correct. Some okay. won't go. Why wouldn't we they, do this with college? They have, look, Why wouldn't we do this for college years. age two? Like, what is at age 16 that is so special about the age 16? The only thing I can see there is that it mm -hmm. saves the taxpayers and that's a bad money. Thing. Yeah, well... I think there's a reason why we had uh, public education in and this country. And there's a reason why and we moved to the 300,000 New Yorkers every single year to Florida and Texas. There's a reason why they're flocking out of our state in droves. There's there, a reason why we can't sell housing. Uh, sell housing it's because of the cost more. of housing. Yes. Taxes and all types of things. What are the cost of housing? Opportunity. The cost of housing. Of course, safety. But those three. Of course. Uh, and you're I, like, let's I, just pay more money. Larry, you, you, for you, it all comes down to kid. how do we cut taxes, that the only reason why people would leave here is cutting taxes. Texas no, is. is what? 50, 50th in education or 49th? It's, it's not only because of that. What is it? What is it? What, what is I don't know Texas? what Texas is. I have no idea. No you idea. have I'm no not, idea what Texas is? I don't pay attention is? to Texas. I have no idea. I don't know. You can look it up. You guys got like 18 people. They can look it up. We, got, we it got a couple of people here who can look it yeah, up. We'll look it up. I don't know what it is. I mean... The uh, it is let's because just, people who don't care about Hold on. let's assume you're right and it's 50th. It's the worst. Okay. If people are going to the that state, how bad is our state? If you're right and Texas 50th, oh my, we should be embarrassed. We got to fix something. I'm giving you an answer to fix it. Let me cover my last piece. Why do we go to the last two years? Because now kids are choosing their schools. They're going to go to a school that they feel excited about. Oh, I want to go to a science two years prep school. I want to go to a so-and-so school. I'm going to go to this school. They want to go to specialized schools. Are there going to be administrators to at New this York school City for a while? Is this going to create more or less administrators? It'll be those schools are going to be private schools. I see. They're private schools. They're private schools. And how will we be sure? Like, I mean, are they going to be like for-profit colleges? Maybe. I don't know. Let them do what they want. Why do I care? You're well, choosing. Because I am familiar with for-profit colleges and their scams to get government Most money. Most are scams. But yes, you're right. Yes. So why would you set up a system that completely because, invites that? No. And I presume that they're, now, they're totally unregulated. They're just businesses, right? And let's assume for a moment that you are correct, that all of these schools are scam schools. Say you're right. You're right. They're all scam schools. Guess what happens then? If you're correct and they're all scam schools, then parents and teachers and kids learn at 16, 17, oh my God, this is scam schools. Guess what? They won't go to scam colleges. That's even weird. Even if you're right. <laughs> well, wait a second. Even if you're right. That's weird. I don't think you'll be right. I don't see that being true. We have, because private schools we have do a just pretty good job of educating people. Billions of dollars in loans to scam schools. Yes, so let's not do that anymore. Not not forgive the you. loans? No, let's get kids know what the hell they want to do by the time they're 18 or 19 so that when they go to college, they make better choices and decisions. Do you think uh, yes. Trump University was, uh, do you think that was a valid school? So this is Trump University now? Well, I mean, you're saying essentially they'll set up Trump universities and we'll, instead not, of sending, excuse saying. me. There's still rules on setting up a school. You got to be accredited still in New York State. Trump so wasn't wait, that. Okay, so Trump university wasn't that. So okay, let's get into the regulation now. So we got to have regulation for these schools. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who so we do. Who against? Uh, who says there's no regulation? They're all private. They're they're all private. And so well, you just said that if they're scam schools. Yes. If they scam the system, is it possible some schools will scam our system? Yes. There are high schools now that are garbage that don't that that don't work. High schools now that don't work. There are high schools now that are completely broken and don't work. So, of course, there will be some schools that scam the system. Currently, there are schools that scam the system in our actual no, system. No, no but they're, they're, they are, miserable. there is oversight it, to the extent that these schools are, are, are underfunded or um, of course, underfunded, of course. Yeah, of course, because of course. there's we, we ask these schools again to do stuff that we're not doing as a society. And we certainly can't achieve 
by uh, by cutting taxes. So let me go to the other piece, which you may enjoy. It is uh, it is what I call the GIB, which is the uh, graduated um, income boost. And that is across New York State to where it's similar to Milton Friedman's idea of a negative income tax. We create that here in New York State to where people who are making less than thirty six thousand dollars a year will get some form of check from New York State, again, funded by the same fund that I talked about earlier, the New York State uh, Social Trust, which is the uh, I also call the NIST. If that begins to happen now, oh, the working mom will get some cash from the state. It doesn't get rid of her federal funds if she has any. It doesn't change anything else, but she gets some extra cash. With that extra cash, she can, if she wants to, uh, deal with um, the health care or deal with, uh, deal with local child care. She can begin to make these things happen. I'm okay with this idea. I'm not, look, I come from a poor neighborhood. I know what it's like to be so poor. So it's, it's essentially uh, a, uh, like the child tax credit, for instance. Similar, except you, it's Except it's for we fund it with a private fund that we correct. hope does not, that doesn't really have a dedicated funding source. Well, it has one issue. only there that. Isn't a, it, there it, are let me examples just, let me just, of this being successful. I'm sure there I'm are. I'm not making this up. Uh, there are also Norway examples. does it. Uh, Singapore does it. I, I, there are also examples of these type of funds going belly up. And, and when you talk about uh, Norway, Correct. you're talking about a society, you talk about a system where there's a lot of other mechanisms for support in that society. And they also have a much higher tax rate than we do. But the, um, they actually tax their poor more than they tax their wealthy by percentage. Uh, it, they also have much higher taxes across the board because their poor are the, it, to the extent that they have a poor. Yeah. It's not w the way that we uh, identify poor Correct. because they have health care. They have child care. They mm -hmm. have uh, mandated uh, jo uh, jobs. I mean, they have job guarantees. So it, you're comparing apples to oranges there with that. And no, all I'm saying in, is in a place like a Singapore, you also things. have um, uh, a like, you know, healthcare which is heavily regulated and price capped. I mean, to do to to put all these eggs in that private basket without any of the other uh, support systems that existed around it, you know, I think is is really I'm not dangerous. Away support them, Sam. No, this we don't have missing. enough. You're, we you're don't assuming. need we need to add in this in this state like what for instance health care you want to do with health care you have these health savings accounts you call them something else but they're basically health savings accounts and uh the idea being that we would get rid of medicare or i should say medicaid convert it into health uh, savings accounts but then it's use not we're not getting rid of it no the you, idea is the idea is right now Medicaid and Medicare, they have an idea how much money you're going to spend every year based upon whatever actuaries, right? They know, okay, he's got this pre-existing condition, this amount of money, this amount of, I'm sorry, this amount of age, whatever. And they have an idea. For the sake of argument only, they think Sam Cedar is going to spend $4,000 a year in Medicare and, and medical expenses, whatever the number is. So I'm saying, give you the account with the debit card, allowing you to go to any provider you want, use your debit card. Medicaid doesn't go away. If you come into a problem, you can still go back to Medicare if you want to. You go back to Medicaid if you want to. You can. What I'm saying is they give you a, a card that you can use in the private sector if you want to. This is voluntary. You can just stay on Medicaid, Medicare. I'm not getting rid of anything. If you choose to use that, here's what I believe will happen. And I may be wrong. And everything I'm saying, I could be wrong. But damn it, I'm giving you some serious ideas to fix things. And I'm not taking anything away. So you go to private doctors and you swipe your, your card. And all of a sudden, the doctor says, wait a minute. I'm a private doctor who does not take health care. And you live in New York City. So you know, I mean, health insurance, you know that there is becoming a two-tiered system in our city. People who take insurance and people who don't. You've seen it. You know it to be true. The wealthy go to those places. And the poor get stuck in managed care, which most of them are unhappy with managed care. Not all. Some are okay with it. Most are unhappy with managed care. I'm now giving someone who is poor or middle class the opportunity to go to wealthy doctors if they want to. That's what I'm doing with this. And when they see that, my hope is this. My hope is when doctors who are wealthy see this, go, huh, I can get this money? Maybe I should lower my prices so that I can start getting this cash. I can start getting cash without having to have all the admin required 
for the for for Medicaid, Medicare, and everything else. Those wealthy doctors that you're talking about, at least in the context of New York City, they don't take health insurance. That's my point. They wouldn't have to. They, right, well, but they don't take health insurance now. And by health you're, insurance, I mean they private. won't have to. Is my it's, entire it's, point. Larry, hold on for one second. Your argument is they're going to lower their prices because they don't so have they can the get, excuse they can me. Get the cards. Can I finish? Like, yes. For, if I show up, Sam Cedar, with four thousand dollars in cash. And a Medicaid uh, recipient shows up with four thousand dollars in cash. Yep. These doctors who don't take insurance, right? My cash is the same as their cash. Correct. There's no incentive for them to lower their money unless they don't have any patients. But like you say, this is a two-tier system, and they yes. have plenty of patients. That's why they can afford to keep their prices so high. Yep. Agreed. Okay. So, so but my. But so there's point. no so we're losing the uh, the Medicaid and Medicare benefits that we have on society's medical expenses because we have no price controls there. And we're again relying you're relying for some reason your 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 assumption is these doctors who can charge a thousand dollars a visit, let's say. Sure are going to lower their prices because yep. they're getting more business. But the fact is, is that they have all the business they need. That's why let, they can keep their prices at $1,000. Let me give you an example of it actually working. I gave you examples. Nothing I said is not an example of success. Everything has an example of success. You may disagree with that example, but I'll give you an example of success. There is a, there is a medical system in New York State, in New York City, I'm sorry, in the country, I'll say, in the country, that is next to our currently in New York State government-run system, right? And that is the non-essential medical field, right? LASIK eye surgery, cosmetic oh dentistry, God. body enhancements, things of that sort, right? Compared to the essential services, it's almost unregulated compared to that. It's regulated, of course, but relatively it's very, it's hardly regulated at all. In every single case, every one of them, price has come down, accessibility has gone up. The, before, when, when we were young and you had LASIK eye surgery, it was per eye. It was so expensive. Now anybody yes. gets it. I, I've heard the right? LASIK eye surgery um, uh, example many, many Cosmetic times. Cosmetic dentistry, body enhancements. Yes. Insert thing yes. here. Every place where what I said happened, good. meaning yes. more people could get it, it, could get it. What is true is it all luxury goods, Yep. when technology improves and more people start to use luxury goods, and yep. when there's more uh, people with more money who can afford luxury goods, mm -hmm. their prices tend to come down. But essential goods, mm -hmm. like actual health care, mm -hmm. don't, unless they are, their prices are capped. So the example so, that you're giving, again, mm -hmm. is apples and oranges. Yes, TVs, I, I have, also, TVs have also gotten cheaper. That's because everybody doesn't need a TV, A, and B, the technology has improved. So hold on. But, Tell me but, what, what's, what's gone but up the difference, in costs. What's gone up in costs in terms yeah. of, uh, in terms of like uh, medicine? Anything. I mean, what, whatever you're telling me, right? You're saying, well, these things are all luxuries. So are you saying the only thing that doesn't go up is luxuries? Everything else, the price come. I, I don't know. I'm. I'm sorry. The only thing that goes that 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 doesn't go up is essentials. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me write now. So you're saying only essential things rise in price. That's it. No, I'm not saying only essential things rise in price, but essential things tend to rise in price because they're essential, and you, you cannot make the decision. That government run things rise in price, and everything you're saying that's going up up in price is government run. Uh, that's what me. I would say. Excuse me. I, I can tell you from my own experience that my doctor, run. that my doctor, he is not government run at all. Is he, His does prices he take insurance? have gone up. No. I like that very much. I'm yes, I, I have to submit. <laughs> I have to submit. And my yes. insurance company will give me some percentage of that yep. back. And Absolutely. it's usually much less, actually, because yes. they say, you know what? Uh, this is a baseline cost and this is all that we cover. Yep. And with Medicare and Medicaid, it's mm -hmm. even better because they actually contain costs. I Nope, I love what you're saying because you're, you, what I say often, people don't often believe me. I say this is a two-tiered system. Yes, and there is. And, I'm, and, 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 and what and, I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get more people in the lower system 
to experience the higher system. But dude, that four thousand dollars is not going to go. The, if you're saying that Medicare a, a Medicare, a Medicaid person, doctors. a Medicaid person spends, we just said four thousand dollars a year, right? Whatever that number is. Okay. That four thousand dollars in the private sector is not going to go nearly as far. It's probably going to go. I don't know, maybe 80%, maybe 70%, maybe 60%. You're probably right. I'm not against these things. But again, even if you do it, wait, you wait, still you mean against these things. You're not, but okay, so they can go and blow uh, some money on a doctor that they're not going to see again because yes. they've got to go to their regular doctor with Medicaid. Correct. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yes, you're correct. And so how so does that, that happens, how does that not raise prices? So all of a sudden my doctor now has 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 uh, 20 potential uh, clients in any given day or patients, I should say. And he's like, I only have time no to see 10. I only have time to see 10. I guess I can raise my prices. Maybe. Or well, no. Yes, say, that's the way that people operate. That's not always not at all. People constantly shift and adjust and make and make changes. Of course they do. If you own a bakery, I mean, you're turning this all into a consumer product. So let's use a bakery. OK, I sell 10 pies a day. Yep. But all of a sudden I start getting 20 people coming to my 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 bakery. Yep. What's the first thing that I do? Probably hire somebody, I would assume. No, no. What's the first thing I do? Give them, Kate, I don't know, help me out. I raise the price of my pies. Maybe. Okay, no, let's not do. maybe. Yeah. No, Hold if on, I'm running a business, Hold on, that's what listen. I do. So you get 20 people to come into your into, to your um, into your bakery, right? To buy your pies. I love that. Good for you. You're making some money. Life is good. I people have, 10, have, a nice I have pies. 10 pies. Now, 10 of the people who came in, right, usually can't get your awesome pies because they're, they don't have enough money. So they usually can't enjoy your awesome pies. No, it's not but, because they don't have enough money. They're, they're lining up. The 20 people have lined no, no, up because no, no. they want to buy my pies saying. at five you, bucks. You, and I say, you, you know you what? The pies are now going to be five I'm and a quarter. I'm going to give you an analogy now. I'm going to give you an analogy now, right? 10 people can't afford to have your awesome pies. And every day they come in and have your awesome pies. I'm good, good for them. But now there's 10 more people that have a choice now, short term, to go buy your awesome pies, right? Because they have it. They have a the, the credit, right? They have, so they go in. They go. Let me try Sam's awesome pies, right? Well, if you just raise your prices to where they can't get your awesome pies, because you only have ten, so only the the first ten people who show up get there. Some people aren't going to get your awesome pies, even if you raise your prices. Yeah, right? I'm a baker. Ten. I'm interested not in the entire world eating my pie. I'm interested in making money off my pies. Okay, that's like that's absolutely untrue most people will expand if they can that's how most businesses work but say you're the one guy who doesn't i'm gonna so say you're how the does guy the who doctor says, expand? you know what no matter what i'm just selling 10 pies i don't care what the market says i'm selling 10 pies to hell with them all okay, the first thing i do that. is raise I my prices Hold then on, the yes, second thing you're gonna sell 10 pies then no the second what, thing is i hire another i hire another yes which is yes, what i said exactly yes. that's the second thing i do correct now yes. what is the analogy where the doctor you're does not letting me what? finish my story because i think you know where i'm going with it already my story is if you no decide to only there. sell your 10 pies because you're hardcore sam and you're only selling 10 pies okay great then those other 10 people are going to go someplace else to get their cool pies and they're going to go to emma's bakery to get the cool pies that's going to happen Right. And if she's if she's hardcore like you, I'm always selling 10 bars. She's doing it, too. Then they go to, they go to Matt's bakery and eventually they're going to be more people selling pies and they're going to start lowering their prices. How do I know that? Because that's what always happens. What you're saying is let's just give it more money or better. Your, your other plan is let's make Medicare for all and let's hope that the wealthy people in this country decide that's OK, that they go along with your plan and they control this country right now. They're not. They're well, just going to have okay. their own system. They're going to make sure Medicare or whatever is garbage. And they're not even going to be part of your plan. All right. I'm so, trying to make a realistic culture I, change. I understand, I understand what you're saying. People right. start okay. seeing okay. that there is I, a way that this can be better. Adding a that baker. That is what I'm trying to achieve. Adding somebody to help you bake, bake pies. Much easier than adding a doctor in a facility. Okay. First off. Um, New York state and, law, yes, but we should change New York state law to make it easier. I mean, I'm happy to open up immigration more and have uh, doctors 100%. from, uh, we, we, can, we can agree on that. Look at that. Um, I knew we'd get something to agree with, Sam. That's something. We did it. But Larry, I'm interested in this notion that, that, do you think there's a problem with, uh, with a Medicare for all uh, system? 
aside, or I should say, it sounded like what you, you the issue you had with that is that the oligarchs that uh, that hold sway on our system uh, will will prevent that from happening, and that's the problem that with it. I think you see it already. So why are we giving them tax cuts? Because the way that they got to be oligarchs mm -hmm. was because we shifted from a tax system which in the 50s and 60s taxed 90 percent on every yep. dollar over what yep. would be considered three million dollars today I'm annually every, 90 cents on every dollar uh, above yep. three million dollars in today's dollars yep. which which kept wealth inequality relatively in check relatively in check obviously a lot of problems uh, that existed in society at that time but relatively in check Yep. And so why do all your proposals essentially cement that problem, which you have just indicated is would be the problem with Medicare? Because I, I mean, I, I, yep. that's your first complaint with Medicare that the oligarchs who run this country are going to fight you on it. I mean, I would I agree with that. Or they do now. now, but yep. it's a it's a good idea. Uh, in and of itself, in terms of uh, of of containing costs and saving our government me, and our people let me money. Touch all those pieces. I'm glad you asked them. And, and I think what you we're I think we're agreeing on a lot of problems. I think we are. I think on the problems we're agreeing upon. And what I'm saying is, I feel like, and you can tell me I'm wrong if you like, the current system is not working. Second, if you're telling me, Larry, we need to go to Medicare for all or whatever is the big thing you want. That is such a, a, a massive change that for me running for governor, that is a fantasy. It's just not going to happen. There's just no way I could ever implement that system. There's no way it would ever work. I might just become an activist instead and just yell and scream down in Union Square if I want to. And you can do that. I'm not against you going to Union Square and screaming that if you want to. But I'm not that. I'm a candidate. So I have to come up with a plan that I think could actually work and begin to make change. And if I don't make some change, this is my biggest piece about being a third party. I understand clearly that the odds of my victory are slim. I'm not fooling myself. I get that. Can I win? Sure. Jesse Ventura did. It's absolutely possible it happens once in a while. Maybe I'm that guy who's going to be the victor and win. Sure. Absolutely could happen. But even if I don't, if I'm able to get in the debate stage and talk about this and have this conversation with you like this, then someone else will have to have an actual plan that will work. Whether they take my plan or not, I don't care. When I was on Joe Rogan at the end of that, sh that show, Joe Rogan said, Larry, I love your plans. They're great. You should lock them down. I said, why? He said, somebody will steal them. I said, take them. I don't have to run then, do I? Take my plans, make my state better so it's not broken. So all I'm saying to you is, you can disagree with all my plans if you want to. I'm the only guy talking about actual plans. The Republican says there's no problem. Democrat says more funding. Neither of those two is the option. I, I, um, I think you're wrong for two or three reasons. Dumb. One, I do think uh, there are other plans. The Maybe there are, but I don't see the, the Democrat candidate saying them. I mean, I, I was think, a Republican candidate saying them. I think we do see other plans. And if to the extent that you're constrained as a candidate on what you can go for, they as functioning if, as people could actually win, they're even more constrained in terms of what they can do. If, so if that's an excuse as to why you would not uh, propose Medicare for all because you're a candidate uh, no. and you think you might as well be an activist uh, if you're going to propose that, <clears throat> I think that you, you, you could apply that to these people who actually have a much better chance as you said uh I would argue at, the at winning they and more then power than i have and then i would also suggest to you that the idea of expanding a pre-existing program in this country that covers already uh a 25 percent of our population one sure. form or another medicare medicaid s chip sure. um the idea of expanding that to cover 80 percent of the country uh, 90 percent of the country 100 percent of the country is far more likely than the idea that we're going to eliminate uh 11th and 12th grades in this in particularly in this state um and so Not eliminating if that yeah, we're going to we're going to melt them down we're going to eliminate public school uh for uh 11th and 12th grade that's true yep that's accurate Yep. I would say that the likelihood of that happening is far less than the likelihood of us getting Medicare for all in this state. 
And so your your excuse as to why you're not supporting it does not really pass my smell test. But yes, it is true. You do have plans. The, Thank you. The through line through them is essentially privatizing them and trusting the same corporations and private interests who are preventing us from getting um, things like uh, Medicare for all. And that's what I'm I find problematic. No, yes. I'm saying localization. Literally, you're saying, you, you're you saying and I both said tax cuts. That, that you can't expand it. Right. So you've got to make sure it's local. Tax so it's cuts. Local. Tax cuts is what you're saying. For local people. Yes. Well, we mean local people. Yes. Capital gains tax cuts. How many? Property how many tax that? cuts are local people. That's the average New Yorker. Yes. Property that's tax the cuts. Average New Yorker. Yes. Every one of my plans is focused on two things. Number one, stopping the bleeding of New Yorkers from the state. You can say New York State's great. I happen to love New York State as a state. I think it's a beautiful state. But clearly people don't think that. How do I know that? They're leaving in droves. They're not coming here as fast as they used to. So that's obviously, and you can go that a market or whatever you want, they're voting with their feet. They're leaving like they're tomorrow. We have more debt, more deficit, and a bigger budget. It's broken. That's for sure. And That's, what I don't hear anyone saying is, here's how we get people to stay. I'm giving options for people to not pack up and leave. And all we talk about is more money, more spending, more money, more spending, more money, more spending, and more people leave. I want them to stay. And if Larry, you notice, before let me my, ask you a question. This is your wait, second wait. time running, correct? Go ahead. Yes, it is. When was the last time you ran? 2018, four years ago. Okay. When did we start losing uh, people in this state? What uh, about 2010, give or take. Was it 2010? Because I was Maybe looking at a graph that looked like 2017. In that area. It looked at, to me at 2017 It's when, we, on that when graph. we started um, not growing as fast as the rest. Okay. So our rate of not growing as fast was in 2010. Correct. But we started losing people in droves, as you say. Well, really, after uh, during COVID. But we started to lose people was a disaster in 2017. Course, absolutely. Without yes. a doubt. Yes. I yes. mean, you don't exactly. want to be in a... In fact, every state in the North... I think except for one uh, lost people yeah, uh, during Hope COVID be us, because you yeah. want to be outside and you yeah. want it to be warm. But really, it's not it's not the first thing in your plan, is it? I mean, to, it, the first thing in your plan that is a hallmark of every one of your plans is cutting taxes. And you and I have a disagreement yep. as to whether... And I, I would agree with you. I don't think we should fund uh, uh, schools by property taxes. There we go. Look, I think that's highly place, inefficient. Man. I would raise income taxes. I need to ask an endorsement from you now. I would raise income taxes and I would impose a wealth tax. And if people don't want it, they can go down to Texas mm -hmm. and uh, have their kids go to the public schools or go to the private schools in Texas yep. or wherever it is that they're going to go. And that's yep. okay. Um, that's okay. But that's what I, that's what I do. And, 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 and the fact that it's a part of every one of your plans. In fact, you started on every discussion of your plan was a uh, how you finance it. And it always started with cutting taxes nope. and and privatizing uh, yeah. the way that we raise that money. And that's the Perfect. fundamental aspect of libertarianism. You know, I'm that a libertarian, I think, right? Saying that you expect anything else. No, but I but 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 the yes, I want you to have ballot access because I yes. think that there should be uh, it should be uh, easier for third parties, four parties, five parties, whatever, to 100%. get ballot access. Yes. But I do think like your ideas are um, would lead to a further deterioration of society. And I would suggest, actually, that it's really been the privatization movement, the um the, the cutting of taxes, the, the valuing uh, making money via money over wage labor, which is really what we're talking about when we talk about capital gains taxes being reduced. Sure. All of those things have led us to where we are now with a lot of our problems. And I would argue and, that in New York State, that's not the case. New York State government has grown in every sh way, shape and form. Every way. Andrew Cuomo was pretty, uh, pretty uh, vigorous about cutting corporate taxes and about uh, shifting the, the tax burden, without a doubt. I mean, he, he cut New, uh, the tax. New York Stock Exchange is considering going to, to what, Austin, Goldman Sachs, considering going to Miami. They're all considering packing up and leaving Wall Street. You can live on Wall Street now. It's a residential section called FIDI. I, 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 what you're saying, I don't think is true. I think New York State has been putting more and more government involved in everything. Government runs all the hospitals. Government runs almost everything. Andrew government Cuomo cut twenty percent. Twenty percent of public hospitals were cut, and that is why we can track 
the deaths of COVID in this state to those areas would have been underfunded with public hospitals. But so, who's running it? Government's running it. It's my point. No, no, but listen. Government's running all of this. Everything you're mad about, government's running. And, and they and, have, and, and they and are doing you, so you with a, less well, let me the resources. Tax you up. The wealth tax. You said, yes, you know what, Larry, we used to have 90% tax rate. You're right. And what did the wealthy do? They found other ways to make money and other ways to bring money in. They went around the wealth tax. That's one of the reasons why we got rid of it. There are other reasons, obviously, but one of them, they went around it. They started getting money through things like stock exchange and things like that. And that made private uh, capital even more valuable. I would argue the, the powerful private capital and stock market that we have now was because of a 90% tax. That was one of the reasons, there are many obviously, but it's one of the reasons why they went that, that route. That doesn't track they went whatsoever, that route other reasons. You, you know that the stock the market tax, was ascending. They will find another way to make their money, the or they will just market, leave New York State. The stock market was ascendant in the early 70s, into the 70s. It exploded yep. in the 80s 100%. when when Ronald Reagan uh, uh, cut the capital gains tax and cut yep. the tax rate by almost 40%. He but Ronald Reagan began it, and then uh, Bill Clinton put the final nail on the coffin, ending Glass Steagall. What exactly? But yes. all the but so it doesn't track. And How are you Democrats saying? But wait a second, Larry. You just said government. The reason why the stock market I'm was ascendant. Party. Excuse me. You just said the reason why the stock market was ascendant was because of those ninety percent taxes. No, that's not what I said. I said one of the reasons why the wealthy. You didn't went say there, that. I said one of the reasons you said it's because that's not what I said. I said it was one of there were many reasons. That was one of them. Was it a big reason? Um, it, 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 I, it, was I it believe, a relevant reason? Was yes, it a significant I believe reason? In the sixties, <clears throat> I believe in the sixties and seventies, when the tax rate was so high, wealthy people were looking for the reason, and that opened up their eyes more <clears throat> towards that. It became more attractive, just like when Glass Steagall was 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 ended. The idea of putting mortgages into the market became more attractive. So okay. yes, I think it became what more attractive. What was the and what was the tax the rate in those sixties and seventies? I I, don't, I couldn't tell you. It was not ninety percent. It would be dropped. It was but, dropped. That's what you're saying. No, tell I'm me again what you're saying because I didn't confused. thinking about this. Back in the fifties, they were thinking, "Wait a minute, how do I make this money?" So it took him this? 20 years to build up the stock market. That's just a historical. No, 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 not to build up the stock market. No, no, no. What I'm saying is to get wealthy people to think about other ways of making money. It took them some time to start thinking about how to do that. Yes. Didn't happen overnight. Of course not. Well, of the way that not. they did that was in they waited until 1981 uh, and um, uh, and uh, Reagan began the assault on our yep. taxes and allowed capital gains cuts. It has nothing to do with the 90% tax rate. Nothing to do with it. Okay, I, fine. I'm not going to fight you on it. Fine. Oh, that's because it's just a fact. But I don't blame nothing you. To do with it. But, no, no. Then why did we just keep 90% tax rate the whole time? Let's go back to it. What? I, I'm in favor of that. We did come to an agreement in the final analysis. See that in the end, we win. 90% tax rate. I knew we would rate. do it, Sam. I knew we would. I, I knew we I, would. Larry, this we is going to be the this, day. But I knew we were brothers in arms here. I knew we were. This is going to be the day that I got a libertarian to uh, agree with me on a 90% tax rate. See that? Look at that. You were going to win anyway. All right, man. Well, I appreciate Look at it. Look that. Listen, we all win. I hope you get on the ballot, and thank you for taking the time. Uh, we, we held you a lot longer than we had anticipated, but I really appreciate it. That's because it was fun. And don't forget, guys, LarrySharp.com and Larry Sharp on all the interweb things. All right. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Folks. It went a little longer than we had planned. Uh, hour 40 minutes, is that what we did? It went about as long as uh, I expected it to. I Never got the answer on that uh, universal uh, child uh, care, but we certainly went around uh, the, uh, the, the horn with stuff.